there. We're at the St. Victoria Library and it's freaking beautiful. Also, we just took a two hour tour with this really wonderful tour guide. His name is Graham. They have the free walking tours. They're usually supposed to be an hour, but I think he could sense our excitement for all the knowledge that we just learned. And so he turned it into two hours and we've learned so much that we are about to share with you. So guys, behind us, we actually have all of the history of Victoria. And it's really, really neat because you get to learn about the way that they stored water, the way, all of the books that they had, and even the original contract that Mr. Batman, which is one of the guys who settled from Tasmania onto Melbourne, had tricked the aboriginals and basically stole the land from them in Melbourne and it's right behind us. So this long piece of paper here is actually John Batman's deed for the property of Geelong, which is just a few hundred kilometers away from Melbourne. One of the coolest things that we learned from our tour guide, Graham, he was telling us that a lot of people came for the gold rush here in Melbourne on the ship called the Marco Polo. And so it would take 60 days from England to get to Australia. And they actually had a proper like newsletter that they would have. They would have this giant printing press and every single week they would come out with like different news clippings. And he was reading some of them out to us and he was telling us that one guy lost his hat. And so they were telling all of the passengers on the ship, if you find a certain gentleman's hat, you should go and return it to him. And then some other guy went and like snuck into the ladies room and they doused him in a cold shower. And this was literally on the newsletter. It was too funny. On my left hand side, you're gonna see a lot of the traditional Aboriginal pictures from when the English first colonized. I don't know if you guys know, but Australia has a pretty turbulent history. They didn't start settling here, the English, until the 1800s, early to mid, and unfortunately, it was at the expense of the Aboriginal lives who had settled and taken care of Australia for over 40,000 years beforehand. And so these are actually pictures showcasing Aboriginals from when they were in the original tribes. And then you can see kind of the evolution of the European influence of when they start wearing European garbs, they start working in the fields, and it's just really unfortunate to see. Fun fact. Every time that someone was hung at the Melbourne Gal, which is like known as the Old Melbourne Jail, they would make a mold of the person's face soon after death. And this mold right here is actually of the infamous Ned Kelly, played by Heath Ledger in some really famous Australian movie that Daniel will put right here. Uh -huh. But he was known as the Robin Hood of his era and would actually steal from the rich to give to the poor. But what ended up happening is that there was this like siege where they had like crossfire with the police. They accidentally shot a cop. Long story short, at the young age of 25, Ned Kelly has a shootout with the police. He comes in this big th armor, but gets shot in the arm, hides in a tree, gets found, gets found guilty, gets hung at the age of 25. And this is his face. And apparently the reason why they would do the cast moldings is because there was a the pseudoscience where they would like measure the circumference of their skulls and that would have something to do with criminality. Totally nonsense, but that's why they would do it. And he had a really perfectly round head. So right next to me, we actually have a replica of the old cable cars that used to be used for the commoners to, and everyone actually to get through the city of Melbourne. Now they have a modern day tram, but what's really cool about these is they were used on like a pulley system. So if you actually come over here, and then here's where they have not only a lot of the pictures of like the different items that were necessary for the cable cars to run, but they also have the logbook with all the details uh, because the old system actually used to be run on a cable system. So what they would do is they would literally hook up a cable to the bottom of the trolley and they had an actual hand lever that they would use to stop and start and then Actually, our guide was telling us that at some times, he named the specific streets, I can't remember them now, but he said that at certain times when they would have to let go of the cable, the momentum of the cart wouldn't be enough to get it around a corner. And so the passengers would actually have to come out and literally everyone push the trolley 
forward until they could connect to the next cable that was on a different street. I think it's crazy that they used to have to do that. We just passed through an exhibit that I wish I could have shown you, but in February of 2009, they actually call it Black Saturday because there was this huge fire. It was 46 degrees Celsius, which is over 120 degrees Fahrenheit and it ended up burning 450,000 hectares, which if a hectare is bigger than an acre, that roughly amounts to a metric shit ton of acres. Um, but it ended up killing I, over 100 people, and it's actually a, a day that's just really sad. I think it was like February 10th, and people just celebrated the 10th anniversary, and I remember it being kind of grim on that day. So, fun fact. This book right next to me is called The Birds of America, and fun fact, they apparently had one of the volumes back in Kentucky and some kids got the bright idea, I think it was 2003, to steal it because it was worth so much money. So they gave it a good run and apparently didn't make it. And come to find out there's actually a whole documentary based on the events of what happens and apparently they have a lot of interviews with them. Um, now I, I think they're out of jail. They spent I believe seven years behind bars because of it and the librarian that busted them still works there. Y'all, this little thing is maybe an inch and a half, and it is the oldest thing in the State Victoria Library. It's from 2050 BC, and it's from Mesopotamia, and apparently talks about sheep being herded or something. Uh, and it was funny, because they had like some guy come over to the library to check it out and like inspect it to see if it was real, and they had it upside down. He's like, hey, VT dubs, I can't read that. Me, we have what they used to have as protection amulets and they were written on sheepskin and what people would do is they would measure out like the length of the scroll they were made specific to people and it would be measured out to the height of the specific person and written for them so the eyes were actually representative of God so God watching over you and then it has a bunch of like reflectory mirrors to like mirror off the demons how neat is that for the sake of being politically correct, I am not calling this what it is, but it's it's called the Midget Library, and it apparently has an English, a French, and a German dictionary, a Bible, a Quran, an alphabet book, and an animal book. How neat is that? So something that's actually really cool about this book right behind me and that actually hits home is so my family, uh, a lot of my family lives in Gainesville where I grew up, but the majority of my extended family, love you guys, miss you, actually live in St. Augustine, Florida, and this text right here is one of St. Augustine's actual texts. This is called the St. Augustine of Hippo. Yeah. St. Augustine of Hippo, and it's about all I know about it. That was his name. That was his name. Hello, and welcome to the State Victoria Library reading room where the dome is at. This was one of the buildings that was built in 1901, which is that big, giant, beautiful dome that you've been seeing, that we've been walking around, which is where the museum is like centered around. This was not only designed, obviously, by the architect, but all of the furniture and even the chair that I'm sitting on is original from that time period and designed specifically by that architect. There's a word that I can't really remember. It starts with a P, but it refers to this type of like architecture of like the watchdog, right? Like watchtower where they can see into every single prisoner cells. That's actually how this was designed. So if you look literally just behind me, there's the like podium where the librarian would stand up there and shush people because all of the rows, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it to where it looks almost like a little star. That's so that they could actually see every part of the library from that little watchtower of sorts. Everybody comes here and they can read, they can work, there's Wi-Fi. And actually, if you look above me, all of those little, like they look like balconies. They have all of the rare collections of books there. They're not accessible to the public, but you can kind of just watch them 
and they're leather bound and they're encyclopedias and they have all of these different covers. It's really, really, really neat. And everything here, all of the tables, the chairs, and this podium behind me are all made in Victorian teakwood, like native here to Victoria.